Hello, and welcome to this month's episode of the Distance Learning Roundtable Show on the Incandescent Radio Network and Incandescent TV. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, proud producer of the show, where experts gather to discuss the future of online education. It is an honor to introduce you to the show's hosts, Pat Casella. He is the executive director of the U.S. Distance Learning Association, and Dean Hoke is the managing director of the international organization, Edu Alliance. You are going to love today's guest. I know I say that all the time, but truly, I am in awe of this woman, Erin Gruel. She is the founder and executive director of the Freedom Writers Foundation. You can meet uh, her and Dr. Alsop, who will tell you about at Waldorf University. They are both working together to bring this work to as many people as possible. You probably know Erin from a famous movie starring Hilary Swank, and the guys will talk about that. So everyone's going to be at the U.S. Distance Learning Association National Conference in Orlando, July 17th to the 20th. Don't miss it. Go to usdla.org for details. So I am now going to throw it over to Pat to tell you more about Erin. Thank you, Hope. And thank you, Erin, for being here. Uh, everyone, fantastic guest today. Erin Gruel is a teacher, author, and activist fighting for social justice for over two decades. Aaron's students, affectionately called the Freedom Riders, came from backgrounds of poverty, gangs, and violence. Many were at risk at dropping out of school due to the school-to-prison pipeline. Under Aaron's guidance, all 150 Freedom Riders graduated from high school and pursued higher education. In 1999, Aaron and the Freedom Riders published their book, The Freedom Riders Diary, which detailed their unique journey from hardship to hope. The book became a number one New York Times bestseller and was adapted into a major motion picture called The Freedom Riders, starring two-time Academy Award winner Hilary Swank as Aaron. Aaron and The Freedom Riders have appeared on multiple national television shows to promote educational reform and have been featured on national public radio, numerous newspapers, and national magazines. In 2019, Aaron and the Freedom Riders were the subjects of the Emmy Award-winning PBS documentary, Freedom Riders, Stories from the Heart. Aaron also hosts the Freedom Riders podcast. In 2022, Aaron and the Freedom Riders Foundation released their latest book, Dear Freedom Rider. This book combines heartfelt letters written by the next generation of student authors, with deeply personal responses from the original Freedom Riders. Welcome, Erin. We are delighted to have you with us. It's exciting. And I'm I with my people. I'm with my people. <laughs> you are with your people. Absolutely. Um, and we'll go back and forth. And I'm going to turn it over to Dean for the first question. Well, Erin, first, it's a pleasure to Thank meet you. you. Finally, semi in person. And I'm going to see you down in Florida as well. But I'd like to begin, as they say at the beginning, I'd like to know a little bit about you in terms of what led you to teaching. And also, once you really got that early experience of teaching, tell me a little bit about your early experiences as a first year teacher over at World War Wilson High School in Long Beach. Let's talk about that. Well, you know, my students always talk about Marvel characters and DC comics having like an origin story. And I, I think our, our collective origin story was so divergent. You know, I grew up in suburbia, went to all the right public schools and played, you know, all the right sports and clubs and thought I was going to go off to become a lawyer. And during my, my college career in Los Angeles, we had the horrible uprising after the Rodney King verdict. And it was just a stone's throw from where I grew up. And those of us that were Angelinos, you know, smelt the, the smoke in the air and the ash and everything stopped in order to start again. And this horrible racial reckoning caused by those riots was the epicenter of what my students went through. So at that moment, I had this kind of existential crisis that I would rather stand in a classroom and be part of the solution rather than a courtroom in, in front of a judge and jury. And it was this kind of shift of, of a mindset of, of how could I how could I help make things a little better? And my family didn't embrace the idea that I wanted to be a teacher as, as much as I was hoping at first, just because I was going into a community that had a lot of homicides. And so that would become 
the origin story of my students, you know, a city under siege with gang warfare, uh, a city that had over 126 homicides in a single year following those riots and students that didn't like reading and writing and school. And that's really kind of this combustible beginning. And it's been quite a journey. Those same students that I saw at the beginning of this journey are still part of my life today. Pat, over to you. Aaron, I have to say, I did some research. I always do before I go on the podcast. You know, I want to learn more about Aaron. Um, so, you know, in 1998, you moved from being a high school teacher to a faculty position at, at CSU, California State University, Long Beach. What led you to that position? Okay, I know we're jumping a little bit here. Um, and tell our audience about the development of the Freedom Writers Foundation and, and that book then, the, the Freedom Writers Diary. Biopically, I, I had been with these Freedom Writers from their first day of their freshman year till they graduated from high school. And this opportunity afforded itself for me to, to continue teaching, um, teaching ultimately many of them in a, a Freedom Writer cohort that we created at the university. So initially I thought, well, I'll, I'll go to this university and you know my appointment might be a year and then they're gonna kick me out. And, and when they didn't, it just made me try a little harder. And my, my thought was if there's other young and naive suburbanites who wanna throw their hat in the ring and, and become classroom teachers, how can I use my experience to be a better professor? And, teach them all the things that I didn't learn when I was getting my teaching credential and my master's. And so the same things that I did as a high school teacher, making things very real and relevant was what I wanted to do as a university professor. How do I make the art of education not be so scary for, you know, for young people when they enter this profession? And then more importantly, how do we get people to stay in this noble profession? Yeah, it has to be extremely rewarding to see them, you know, make the jump from high school into college. And then I'm guessing you still probably even keep in touch with many of them today. Well, well they work with me. You know, we started a we started a nonprofit when they were in high school and, and the nonprofit was just at the time. How do I get those books? How do we take this field trip? It, eventually, how do we send 150 kids who were the first in their families to graduate? How do we send them to college? So initially it was just very myopic. I got 150 kids um, that are challenged socioeconomically and, and how do we pay it forward for them? And then it has grown. It has grown now to students and kids across the globe. But what's been very excited the last couple of years is for, for our annual scholarship that we give every June is the Freedom Riders now have sons and daughters who are graduating and to be able to give that second generation a scholarship to go to college is amazing. And now they're, it's easier. They're, they're following in the footsteps of their parents. And so they know exactly where they wanna go and exactly what they wanna do. And it's it's an amazing scene in just one generation, how Freedom Riders have embraced education and how education has really become the equalizer in, in their homes and in our community. Incredible work, Aaron. Um, Dean, I'm going to turn it over to you for our next question. I'd like to go a little bit back to the teaching side. And you moved from basically a person who was thinking about becoming an attorney to a teacher, etc. But one of the things I've always looked at in teaching over 50 years is that it's one of the great professions. It's very awarding, rewarding, but at the same time, it's extremely frustrating position. And I'm not so sure it's always about the teachers or the students. It may be about other things. But what I've also noticed is that during these past years, it's really becoming difficult to recruit teachers to go into elementary or particularly secondary schools. And that it's difficult to get people to go into higher education to become teachers. You above all others, I think can make a case for why somebody should go into the field of teaching. Can you do that? Can you talk to us about honored. that? I would be honored to, Dean. I, I, I'm so proud to be an educator and I'm so proud of our profession. 
I think it is noble. I think it is just. I think it is right. I think educators are often overworked and, and sadly underpaid. But that aside, it is it is bigger than most of us. It is it's a calling. And I think that so many of us that are literally drawn to this profession see see the element of of paying it forward and 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 righting wrongs that we see in our society. So ironically, when I graduated, it was really difficult to to get a job. And I, I was so honored to to be able to serve in the community that I serve. But now the sad thing is because of political shifts and a pandemic, we are losing teachers. Um, and, and that makes me really sad because I think if they listen to that inner voice and they realize what, what being an educator can do for themselves psychically, for our, our community, for our country, I, I just hope that I could, could wave the flag and help re recruit teachers in this profession. I, I'm so, so proud of it. And I, I think I will be a teacher uh, till my dying days. Pep? Thanks, Dean. Aaron, talking about moving people forward. Uh, recent guest of our series, Dr. Robert Allison, uh, your president of, of Waldorf University, speaks very highly of you. Um, there's a master of education with a concentration in social emotional learning that was designed in partnership with you and the Freedom Writers Foundation. Tell our viewers and listeners a little bit more about the program and how did it come about? Well, I want to do a shout out to Dr. President Alsop. Uh, we in Freedom Writer World, we have given him a nickname and it is Glitter Bob. And when you think about glitter, it is all things that is fun and whimsical and theatrical. And we invited this esteemed president to join us for a Freedom Writer teacher training that we do. And, and the collective we is my amazing Freedom Writers. And I do a one-to-one -one pairing. So if an educator comes, um, they are partnered with Freedom Writers. And in this particular cohort that President also went through, we had elementary school teachers, middle school, high school, college, and then a president. And we also had some administrators. So it was this beautiful um, tapestry of, of, of my profession at, at, the different, at the different levels. And it was this full immersion. He, you know, he dove into the deep end and Freedom Myers fell in love with him and thought, oh my God, this is, you know, this is so amazing that the president of a university is still fun and still provocative and, and is gonna return to his university and, and take some of the lessons that we had cultivated in room 203 and, and through our journey. Initially, there was this talk like, how, how do we do a deeper dive? How do we take this partnership? Waldorf is located in Iowa. We are here in Long Beach, California. And so initially it was the good old fashioned visits. You know, I would get on a plane and, and I would fly to him and he and his colleagues would fly to California. And we realized, you know, we want to do more. And when the pandemic happened, it was so organic. You know, what we realized in, intuitively is kids, kids and teachers are hurting. And, and being in a box on a Zoom, in someone's living room in their pajamas is a, is a weird and yet wonderful way to learn. So how do we learn from the situation that education that we know is never gonna be the same? So we've got to embrace technology and, and we've got to look at things a little differently. And what we intuitively sense that came to fruition is that the kids were gonna be more depressed than ever, that there might be a lot more anxiety because of the pandemic there might be sadly suicide ideation. The idea of looking at social emotional learning from, from the ground up became this beautiful idea that was kind of manifested from the fine folks at Waldorf and our initial guinea pigs um, were the Freedom Writers. We, we cast a net and we wanted to create a social emotional curriculum that undergraduates could, could also take as well as graduate students in the teaching profession. And so I put out the net and the call and said to any Freedom Writers, if you're some units shy of graduating with your undergraduate degree, or if you'd like to start a master's program, we're gonna create classes from scratch and we want your inputs and we want your buy-in because you are going to be the face of all of these different themes. 
And the themes are resilience and, and perseverance and, and hope. And so when the Freedom Irish said, pick me coach, I, I, wanna, I wanna be the, a part of this. What was incredible is we were able to go backwards to go forwards. And Narada, whose story is prominently featured in the Freedom Riders Diary, and also one of the most beautiful moments in the feature film about a young boy who is homeless and, and the trials and tribulations and the shame and the secrets kids carry around when they are homeless. Narada was the face of resilience. Um, Tony was the face of hope. So we were able to create this incredible curriculum that was real and, and relevant to not only teachers, but to young folks to say, I understand that story. And we're putting a face and a name and anecdotes around struggle. And, and that pain ultimately can be a purpose. And that pain can ultimately be one's passion. And I've often said, my original freedom writers are wounded healers. And they were the wounded healers volunteering for this incredible curriculum that we created in the hopes that teachers could learn from our journey. And it has been amazing to be able to, to create curriculum, to, to vet it on my students who have the best BS detector and, and to feel really proud of what we're putting out in the world where really courageous conversations can be had about social emotional learning. Let's talk about July. Let's talk about the USDLA conference. You're going to be there, right? And mm -hmm. you're doing a bunch of stuff. I, I was looking at the agenda and everything. You're going to be a busy person, matter of fact. I think you're doing a workshop. Uh, you're also doing a book signing, a course, and a little coffee and cookie type chat. So it's kind of an informal chat. In particular, tell me about the workshop. What's going to happen there? What's that all about? What I'm so excited about is uh, two of my wonderful esteemed colleagues from Waldorf University, Dr. President Alsop and Dr. Braddix are going to be joining me and we're going to be doing a deep dive on how we took these ideas of, of social emotional learning and, and brought them to fruition and actually showcasing how we use uh, the Freedom Myers podcast and the videos that we created and the stories that were written and then read by the Freedom Myers. When, when the book first came out in 1999, all those years ago, every story in the book was anonymous. And when the feature film came out, we, we changed the names of my students. So now with a little bit of distance and hindsight being 2020, we can actually put faces and names to those storytellers and, and we did. And it's amazing because my students are, are so honest about those stories when they were in middle school and high school and, and how difficult it was, how, how painful it was. And then we shine a light on it with every story and every video that we've created. I choke up. And so it's going to be in a very emotional workshop because I, I think that our stories are going to be holding up a mirror to other kids' stories. Uh, across the country and and what we were able to do in this kind of arc of our, our social emotional curriculum was not only look at the the freedom writers of of the then but really look at the freedom writers of the now with our latest project which is called dear freedom writer and it was stories cultivated by by young students around the globe during the pandemic writing about stories of substance now of, of how the pandemic affected them or their mental health struggles or a, a deeper dive into depression and anxiety. And when these young people wrote to the Freedom Writers, it was the Freedom Writers who volunteered to say, this is the story that I have to write back to because I've lived it and I came out the other side. You know, I, I wanna be the light at the end of a very dark tunnel and, and say that there's hope and there are people just like you who made it to the other side. And so I'm really excited to be able to sh share those anecdotes, to be, be able to have really courageous conversations about the reality of education now and, and be able to make it very conversational that not only are we gonna be presenting, but, but how do we make it relevant to wherever the folks are coming from in their own community? And I think that's always been the most important thing in the, in the Freedom Writers 
journey is how is our story adapted and personalized in another community? Amazing. Wow. Erin, I tell you, you know, when we found out that you were coming to the conference, I was like, berserk, because I'm such oh, a fan. I love the work you do. Uh, you just really are inspirational. And we are going to have so much fun at this conference. So all of our viewers and listeners, go to usdla.org and sign up to come to this conference, where you'll meet amazing Erin and Dean and Pat and me and so many other wonderful people who are just really trying to make the world a better place. So thank you all for being on this July episode of the Distance Learning Roundtable. I'm Hope Katz-Gibbs, proud producer of the show, and we will see you all next month. Take good care.